Good morning. Uh, we are Team 3. My name is Christopher Vinas. I'm Dennis Moreira. And I'm Jose Matos. And our combined project was to analyze a four bar mechanism as well as synthesize a slider crank. For project one, uh, we had to analyze a four bar mechanism. I, we were given the following link lengths uh, where R1 is 20 centimeters, R2 10 centimeters, 15 centimeters, and 22. Uh, theta 1 was fixed at 0 degrees. We had to iterate through a theta 4 from 0 to 360 degrees. So it's very interesting uh, how, that, how that turned out um, in 1 degree increments. And the angular velocity of theta 4 was given constant at uh, 15 radians per second. QS was 15 degrees from the coupler length, and it was also a length of 15 centimeters. We applied Grashoff's rule to our mechanism and found that the addition of our shortest and longest links would yield 32 centimeters, whereas the addition of our intermediate links would yield 35 centimeters. This means that Grashoff's rule is satisfied, making this a type 1 mechanism, and as configured, it is a crank rocker, meaning that link 2 will have a 360 degree rotation. Right. Our mechanism also has an arm attached to the coupler link at an angle of 15 degrees and with a length of 15 centimeters. So completing the forward analysis of our system, we were able to animate it in SOLIDWORKS. And as you can see by the trajectory plots of our point S on the coupler, we do not have any singular positions. Furthermore, by completing the kinematics analysis, we found that theta 4, which obviously does not rotate 360 degrees, would yield a series of imaginary values for the degrees through which it does not rotate. And uh, there, However, there are no singular positions within the appropriate degree path of theta 4. Here we have the acceleration plots for our angular accelerations. Here's our mechanism and its element. We have a gate opener um, used to actuate the, the rocker arm, or this would be link four, our rocker arm, and allow the gate to open for entry. Uh, once the gate is open, the rocker will then travel its opposite position and close the gate. In conclusion, we determined the position of the joints for two closures, location of S for the first closure, angular velocities and accelerations for the first closure as well. Excel results, manual calculations, and SOLIDWORKS results all coincided with each other. For project two, we had to synthesize a crank rocker mechanism. To synthesize so to synthesize a slider crank mechanism, we were given three positions for coordinates A and B. So you can picture, if you will, this is a link. If you picture, if you will, this as a link, where this is point A and this is point B, um, we were given A1, B1, so that would be the first position, then A2, B2, second position, A2, B3, the third position. You notice that's the motion of what a slider crank should be. However, the B points that we were given were not collinear. They were what seemed to be circular. Those B, the original B values ended up on a circle. And we were, as instructed, we modified those values until we got a collinear system, which is these numbers right here, which turned out to be our B final values. Once the positions for point B were corrected, we were able to find our pole positions and then our circle of slides. Knowing our circle of slides, we selected an arbitrary point C1 along the perimeter of this circle and used it to find another two points, C2 and C3, which would be collinear with point C1, 
determining the line upon which our slider travels. With this completed, we're able to plot our positions versus our input joint motion. And as we can see here, we have a smooth motion with no singular positions. Once our slider crank design was synthesized, we ended up with this in our SOLIDWORKS model, where here was our actual crank would be the full, as you can see here, it gave full circular rotation. And this was our slider. And here was our mechanism in, ele in its element, a piston engine. However, in this case, the input is the linear slide, which would then turn linear motion into circular motion. In conclusion, the synthesis of the ORM mechanism showed that the values for B needed to be need to be considerably adjusted in order to obtain a point that would allow the slider to pass through a, point, uh, a straight line as opposed to a circle. A final kin kinematic analysis verified that the slider moves in rectilinear motion as a crank is rotated. This motion was further demonstrated with an internal combustion engine, the most well known and possibly most beneficial use of this mechanism. We are team three. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.